so the secret to fundraising math, uh, I'm going to argue, it, it relates to understanding the difference between a gift of wealth and a gift of disposable income. What do I mean by that? Well, the reason that I say that this is the secret is that a donation comes from the intersection of motivation and cost. Now, most of the time when we're talking about fundraising, we're talking about the motivation side. But often the secret to unlocking major gifts is not necessarily just on the motivation side. Often that secret to unlocking the largest gifts is on the cost side. And the secret is simply this. Major gifts are gifts of wealth, not disposable income. Now, I know that's made sound like a simple distinction, but it's actually pretty powerful. It's powerful because wealth is different. It's not just a different amount. It's actually a different category. It has a different origin. It, it triggers a different mindset. Understanding gifts of wealth starts by understanding wealth. You see, wealth doesn't come from a paycheck. Wealth comes from owning assets that go up in value. Of course, the media is fascinated by people with large paychecks. Athletes and celebrities make really great story characters, but they rarely build wealth. In fact, they commonly go bankrupt. Wealth is appreciated assets. Wealth comes from owning assets that go up in value. People buy assets with inheritance, borrowings, or savings from income. People buy assets that go up in value by, one, picking the right assets. This usually means accepting some investment risk. Or, two, using personal effort to increase asset value. This, of course, is what successful business owners do. This is how wealth is built. Bill Gates started a company, and he grew it by personal effort. Warren Buffett created a new way to borrow money to buy stocks, and he picked the right stocks. The concept is the same for regular people. People borrow money from others. It's called a mortgage. They use it to buy an appreciating asset. It's called a house. Most middle-class wealth comes this way. Whether middle class or ultra high net worth, the answer is the same. Wealth comes from owning assets that go up in value. Wealth is also a different money category. In math, of course, a dollar is a dollar. But in story, dollars are different. The story of wealth is the story of appreciated assets. Wealth is not cash. Less than 3% of household financial wealth is held in cash or checking accounts. Uh, this is using census data from the U.S. Wealth is still money, but it's money from a different category. It's money with a different reference point. This affects fundraising. Asking for gifts of cash is asking from the small bucket. Asking for gifts from appreciated assets it's asking from the big bucket. This difference affects the donor's mindset. Compared to other cash purchases, a $100,000 gift is absurdly large. The cash gift compares with the coffee at Starbucks. It compares with spending from the disposable income category. Compared to wealth holdings, a $100,000 gift might be tiny. The asset gift compares with a different category. A stock gift compares with stock holdings. A real estate gift compares with real estate holdings. Large gifts are made possible by large reference points. Reminding people of their wealth actually changes their behavior. One experiment asked different questions from people going into a grocery store. Some were asked about their wealth. Did they own stocks, bonds, certificates of deposit, and so forth? Others were instead asked what was in their wallet or purse. Did they have cash, credit cards, photos, and so forth? 
what happened. People first asked about their wealth spent over 36% more at the store. They were reminded of a different money category. That reminder changed their behavior. This is an area where small gifts and large gifts work differently. For example, a small ask from a small category, well, that works. It makes the whole thing seem painless. It's a trivial ask from a trivial category. Saying yes is no big deal. A big ask from a small category, well, that doesn't work. It makes the ask seem unreasonably large. The request is too big relative to the category. A big ask from a big category does work. The ask is big, but it's reasonable relative to the category. One experiment illustrates this. People were asked about a donation pledge. It would be deducted from their monthly paychecks, but the amounts were described as either one for $7 a day or as $350, $1,400, $2,500 a year. Changing the description format from the small daily amount to the large yearly amount actually changed the comparisons. For example, when asked with the daily amount, people compared the gift with, quote, routinely encountered petty cash types of expenditures, close quote. The money category was, well, it was trivial. But when asked with the annual amount, people compared the gift with, quote, infrequently encountered major expenditures, close quote. The money category was different. It was larger. For the smallest ask, the daily amount worked better. It was a trivial ask from a trivial category. It's just pennies a day. But for anything over $1,000, those results, they reversed. Giving doubled when using the annual rather than the daily amount. You see, the pennies a day story worked, but only for pennies. Big gifts need big reference points. The pennies a day story creates another problem. A small reference point makes future giving small. In one experiment, workers had a gift made on their behalf. For some, it was donated in small daily segments. For others, it was given in one lump sum. After this, everyone had the chance to then make their own gift. People whose previous gifts had been broken into small amounts, they acted differently. They gave about a third less. Why did this happen? Further questions showed the answer. People use previous giving as the reference point for their donation. When previous giving had been made in small segments, it felt smaller. This smaller reference point led to smaller donations. But there was a solution. Showing the total of prior gifts before making the ask worked. It made the small segments feel larger. This larger reference point increased donations almost 50%. For bigger gifts, we need bigger reference points. Another experiment found a similar result. When prior gifts were described in total terms, people gave more. If they were described in monthly terms, people gave less. Describing past giving as several small gifts is a small reference point story. Describing it as a single large total is a large reference point story. Choosing a larger reference point changes the behavior. Another experiment showed this in a different way. It tested six mailings to over 50,000 people. The top performing headline was campaign donor for blank years. Your most generous gift was blank dollars. Thank you. Notice this sets a reference point of the donor's largest gift. It also emphasizes the length of the relationship. It reminds the donor that they're the kind of person who makes these gifts, especially large ones. By the way, this study was also conducted in Canada, so it shows these are somewhat universal principles, whether we conduct the experiments on either side of the border. 